Sales Report. Happy to be joined once again with Dimitri Serov. He is the CEO of American Airs, which trades under the CSC, under the ticker symbol WIFI. Dimitri, welcome back to the show. How are things this summer? Thank you very much for having me. And I'm doing excellent. Things are great. Uh, enjoying the weather every day and hope it's going to last for uh, another few months before it's back to winter. <laughs> I'm here. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Uh, got a lot of interesting feedback from our uh, first interview. And last time we had you on, uh, we got a good understanding of what EMR is, which is electric mag magnetic radiation from devices such as cell phones, tablets, 5G rollout, and where our world is going over the next five years pertaining to this and how we, the consumers, can protect ourselves pertaining to it. So I want to begin uh, where I started today is uh, concerning people that don't believe in this, because there are thousands of studies that show cell phones, Wi-Fi, and other electric devices like appliances and smart meters are impacting our environment, uh, potentially harming our children and contributing to a host of serious illnesses. Uh, what do you say to the disbelievers who believe electromagnetic radiation is a serious concern, or does it even pose uh, long-term health risks? If so, um, what do you say to them? Well, I don't think that it's, uh, you know, we should call them non-believers. I think they're just not informed, right? Okay. So, you know, if you talk to me 10 years ago, I'll probably going to call you, you know, tell you that, you know, what you're talking about, right? It's not possible. But it's, it's, it's just, uh, you know, once you open up your eyes and you start to research the topic, you see, this is not a, a topic that people actually looking for information on. This yeah. is not a natural thing to do. Wake up in the morning, say, "Hey, let me research EMF or EMR." People don't do that. Uh, it's very specific um, things. So most of the people they're just not aware of the harmful effects. Uh, mm -hmm. However, the moment they look this up and at least even go into their cell phone and look at the warning labels that are in it, which clearly tells you do not bring the phone to your head and use a head right. hands-free speakerphone or wireless speaker uh, instead. Uh, that's it. The people then, then then they converted, right? So so it's not that people don't believe it. People just don't know. They never heard of such thing, right? Right. Do you invest all that much time in it, knowing that, like people that say are misinformed or uninformed, knowing that there's an overwhelming amount of people and studies who do believe in it? You see, we don't focus too much on education. The people for multiple <laughs> reasons. First of all, they're comp they're people that do a much better job in it. Okay, why would I go in? in it and try to convince people that electromagnetic radiation is potentially harmful for their health, right. where you have a university doing that. They are more credible. They're not selling you anything. Most of this reports coming from nonprofit organizations, uh, you know, governments in European Union. So these are the people who are supposed to, you know, warn you and tell you that there is a problem and they, they have no benefit to, to mislead you because they don't sell you anything. Uh, so we are providing a solution here for those people that knowing that there is an issue that they're concerned about, or they just want the peace of mind. So we don't go in and trying to educate the world. Right. A, we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, B, I don't want to put my company in a position where we, you know, some people can look at it as you are trying to get them scared and then yeah, yeah, sell yeah. them a solution. So. We don't do that, but the fact is that most of the people today are in a developed countries, they're aware of the negative effects of electromagnetic radiation. And they were going within a couple of years, up to five years maximum. Uh, this is going to be widely acceptable, accepted um, um, thing like tobacco is bad for you. I mean, they still people still smoke, people still can buy, buy, buy tobacco, but they know it's bad. And, you know, there was a time when they were not sure and they never even looked it up. Yeah. So if so. This is exactly what's happening here. Well said, let's put that aside. Let's focus now in our inaugural interview. We talked about the great technology backing the LifeTune EMR modulation technology that is applied to the devices directly. Uh, do you have anything in development that protects against general use radiation against cell towers and 5G hotspots such as necklaces or bracelets or would this type of protection be ineffective uh, against general environmental EMR? So, so there are two types of, uh, well, there are many types, but the one, uh, the, the, the two that I wanted to mention, 
first of all, there is the electromagnetic uh, um, field, electromagnetic, electromagnetic frequencies coming out of your devices, the ones that you use, they're device specific. So for example, a baby monitor or a cell phone or a cordless phone or you know your Wi-Fi router, these are devices emitting uh, these frequencies and the electromagnetic radiation. So we have a product to work with them. And then the second dose of electromagnetic uh, radiation we get every day is electromagnetic electromagnetic radiation uh, uh, smog, electromagnetic radiation haze. This is a surrounding electromagnetic field that's not necessarily coming from your personal device, but come from power lines, from cell phone towers, and many, many other places. So we do have a product as well to protect people from the surrounding electromagnetic radiation. And we have a product we have products to protect you from uh, electromagnetic radiation emitted by specific devices. Okay, makes sense. One of the main reasons, and we touched on this in our last interview, we at TDR like your company, is that you're the only public company focusing on EMR protection. So you have a significant advantage in your ability to obtain investment capital to expand your business. So saying that, and should you choose to distance yourself from further your competition, uh, how are you leveraging or plan to leverage your listing on the public market to expand your business operations as awareness for this industry grows in the coming quarters? Well, so I don't want to jump too far into this, but basically what we are focused on right now, first of all, a, is to build the infrastructure because we wanted to and we're striving to become an EMF protection, a household EMF protection company. Okay. Uh, so think about it that every household should have at least one device made by our company. That's where we're going. That's where we're striving. So to get there, we need to plan uh, to, to build the foundation. And uh, the, the way we're doing it, we're doing it direct to consumer, uh, uh, online base, and we will take it worldwide. So we are focused on um, obviously we're selling the product very well. The numbers are great and they're been growing very well every year. And this year we are growing as well. So uh, we're just building this uh, foundation right now. And uh, once we comfortable, we'll just launch the marketing in pretty much worldwide. Do you have an idea revenue target wise by the say the end of the calendar year this year? Uh, well, I, I don't want to j jump into numbers at uh, this moment uh, because again, there are certain things I, you know, I can't speak openly, but uh, we are striving to, to get another 400% growth this year. Um, compared to the previous year. That's, that, that is on, on target and I'm pretty sure we can achieve that what's by the end of, of this year. What's some of the feedback that you're receiving from a lot of consumers that you know are buying uh, the product itself? Uh, some of the positive feedback that investors would uh, obviously take note of. So uh, the, 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 the strongest feedbacks we get from EHS people, EHS stands for electro hypersensitive. I, I think I told you already that EHS, it's a disease in European Union, but it's an allergy in the West, in, in, in Canada and US, it's an allergy. So these people basically, they are very sensitive to electromagnetic radiation, to electromagnetic field, to these ele electromagnetic frequencies. They're very sensitive. Some of them are sick and some of them sick like a dog, like really, really sick. Okay. So these people can feel the difference instantly. They don't need to check anything. They just, you know, and these are the feedbacks that we get most of the time from people that are hypersensitive to electromagnetic radiation, just simply, you know, sending us, uh, and you can, you can go on our website and all the testimonials are there and feedbacks uh, from verified real buyers and real customers. And basically all they say, most of them, they say that the product does help them immediately and they feel the difference right away. So these are the feedbacks that we are getting. Um, strong feedbacks. Now, um, we do have feedback, uh, and we do get a lot of them actually from uh, just normal people like I guess me and you, I'm not EHS, I'm not hypersensitive to electromagnetic field. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I can notice that, you know, for example, if I will be not using our own technology, and I'll be on the phone all day or in the computer all day, I, I, I it's not that I'm going to develop these symptoms that are terrible. But I get tired, I can't go, to, when I go to bed, I can't sleep. I mean, I need an hour to fall asleep. Uh, some other things, headache, heavy head, a lack of concentration and things like that, uh, which is a result of exposure to electromagnetic radiation. And, and then once I'm using the, our own technology, I don't feel anything. I mean, it's absolutely like neutral to me. So we do get feedbacks like that from people that are not specifically sensitive to electromagnetic radiation. 
when you buy this product, what's the longevity and lifespan of like, you know, how long it's effective for? And you, so, have, I know you've shared with us in the past, you have a very, very large database. So do you see a lot of frequent uh, revenue and people buying over and over again? There, there are two things to it. One is we just naturally lucky that the devices that people choose to protect, they have a very short lifespan. It's not refrigerator that you change every 20 years. Right. We're talking about gadgets. I mean, how many times you replace your cell phone? I do every year. Right. Me personally, there's nothing wrong with my cell phone after a year, but I do replace it every year. I want the new model. And there are millions and tens of million people just like me. And then everything, everyone else replace their cell phones every two, three years as the contract renews, right? But this is just a cell phone, and a cell phone is just one tip of an iceberg. There are hundreds of devices that the technology can be applied on. So they all live, you know, a year to two, three years, pretty much. So once you replace the device, you need to, to buy it again. So that's why we have tons of repeat business all the time. And a second thing, which we naturally like it to, to, to have, just the nature of things, is just that people constantly add more gadgets. So yes, you started with a cell phone, then you added, you know, like a laptop. Now you have your smart thermostat, then you have your smartwatch. Then, yeah. so it just, it just, there is no, there is no end for it. I mean, the, probably a, a normal person nowadays have at least 10 electronic devices that are connected to his Wi-Fi at home and these are gadgets all need protection. So, um, so yeah, we have a lot of repeat business and people do come back to buy more all the time. Uh, and the second thing is uh, the lifespan of this product. Uh, these are these are microprocessors and yeah. these are passive microprocessors. So there there no there is there is no moving part in it that you know it needs to uh, definitely a maintenance or a replacement. However, we recommend to replace the product every two years. So the warranty is for two years, and we recommend replacing them every two years. Okay. But people do replace them naturally and most of the time before the two years. How many devices, do you have an idea numbers wise, worldwide where we'll be in say five years? Do you have any idea? Uh, we did uh, some market research and there is data. It's not that we came up with this data, the data was there and quite astonishing. Uh, so by 2025, which is tomorrow, it's very soon. I know. There will be 46 billion IOT devices, wow. meaning Internet of Things devices with a very short lifespan, meaning that it's a one cycle of 46 billion devices, and then they're going to come up every two years, they will replace themselves. So um, it's huge. It's yeah. absolutely huge. And these are all, uh, you know, uh, devices that are mainly we're not even counting, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, equipment. Uh, we're talking about handheld, handheld data communication, like right. data communication devices that are con consumer oriented. So when I look at that, I look at your company, the technology that's behind it, it's an industry leader. You're the only company currently in this space that's publicly trading. And I also want to touch on some notable news that you made last October. Your company was granted a design patent from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office to protect your company's unique hardware design for the Defender model series of products. The design actually is patented, protected here in Canada, Europe, and Russia, and allows your company to exclude other manufacturers from making, using, or selling, or importing into the U.S. a similar product type for as much as 15 years. So saying all this, bring this uh, all together for me. How robust is it? with regards to your patent portfolio against competitors that are, I guess, attempting to duplicate your success? Well, first of all, you just mentioned a few. Uh, we gone further than what you just said. So we right. have intellectual property right now in European Union and United, United Kingdom. And it's not just for the product you mentioned, it's for the entire lineup, including we have a trademarks for the Lifetune brand as well in European Union, UK, Canada, and US. So, um, intellectual property is uh, pretty pretty significant and we do have protection in the markets that we are uh, you know looking at um, now in terms of replications look it's um, I say it's impossible just to make a knockoff of this product you can make a product that looks similar but you cannot reproduce the functionality simply it's not going to work because it's very 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 complicated uh, i think i told you before uh, in one of our models in the semiconductor in the, in, in, in the chip itself we have 1.2 million circular resonators etched 
on a semiconductor chip, silicon wafer, at a den density of 0 0.3 nanometers. Wow. Etching. So uh, you, th th there probably there's probably two or three multi-billion dollars companies that are even able to etch right at the 0 0.3 nanometers, most like 0 0.6, you know, 0 0.8 and, and greater, uh, but that's not going to work. Uh, so the technology is extremely difficult to a replicate. It's impossible unless you get down to the blueprints and to the, the, the design of the circular diffraction right. lattice that we etch on the semiconductors. Uh, and then to produce it, uh, there are probably two or three companies in the entire planet that are able to do that. And uh, yeah, so uh, you can probably make a rug that looks the same. Yeah. Or like a couple of cents, maybe a couple of dollars somewhere in China. But again, uh, I don't worry about anyone knocking it off because to me that would be compliment. And they're, you know, brands that are 300 years old with all the money in the world and they still have knockoffs more than, you know, than they produce themselves. So uh, non-concern, non-issue. I know we touched on this briefly last time that we'd spoke, but the design itself, who's behind it? How do you bring something like this together? Because it's very extensive, is it not? It is absolutely. It's, uh, it's, and again, this is what's important to understand that there are other products claiming protection from electromagnetic radiation and they may indeed work. However, the all homeopathic and holistic products, they're basically selling mineral-based elements. An example, a crystal from Himalayan mountain combined with some metal and these together fuse, they do affect on the electromagnetic field one way or another. Mm -hmm. It's a holistic approach. They may indeed work, but it's a, it's a homeopathic product where we produce a microchip which has a, it's a physical device based on fundamental physics, and it's a, it's a, it's it's basically a, a device versus a technology-based product versus a holistic homeopathic mineral-based element. And uh, as far as I know, no one else is doing this. How important is this? All this to like say the existing customers and consumers. Like, what are the questions that they ask? What is a top of awareness or top of mind that they say, okay, this is important to me, and how do you respond to that? Well, uh, people that, that that know that this is an important topic, they, they they search for protection, they search for solutions. And, you know, if you, you can do a test, you can probably Google for anything related to electromagnetic radiation protection, the chances that we're going to be on page one and the first line is 99%. We are there right. first. So uh, anywhere you search from, that's why we're getting orders organically from Brunei, from Singapore, from Kuala Lumpur, from... Uh, from Air Riyadh. I mean, I'm getting orders from Air Riyadh. I have never advertised in Saudi uh, Arabia and I would never do. It's the last thing on my list. It's not even on the list. And I do get orders from them because people do search and they're not necessarily searching for my company. They search for, you know, and my daughter came from school. She has headaches. She was on computer all day, something like that. So of the topic and we come up as a result. So organically people find us uh, worldwide. Now there is, you know, a marketing effort as well, but we really scratched the surface, not even scratched the surface in the US only, but we're planning to to expand uh, it, uh, you know, widely and roll it around the planet. You not anticipate though, when it comes to Google searching, especially with the rollout as it continues with 5G to be a, um, a, a, a high end um, thing that people are searching over say the next couple of years? It's not the, it's not just the 5G. I know a lot of people are just, you know, they hang up too much on the 5G issue. You see, the problem is it's not even the 5G. Electromagnetic radiation has an accumulative effect. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether you're going to be on 3G, 4G, 5G. Yes, the 5G is a way more powerful uh, technology. I mean, I can go into details. Uh, we'll spend 10 minutes. I can explain maybe one of the shows I do. Uh, but but the concern here is that suddenly, and suddenly I'm saying within, look, if you look at the evolution of human or anything on the planet, it takes centuries and, and basically thousands of years to adopt to things, right? But now within like 10 years, 15 years, something has happened and we are now surrounded 24 seven with many 
devices that are emitting electromagnetic frequencies. Right. Okay, it's a non-ionized electromagnetic radiation. Right. Now, accumulatively, all these devices together, 24/7, non-stop, 365 days a year, emitting electromagnetic radiation, and you are absorbing it, and it has an accumulative effect, and it really has a big adverse effect on your health. Now, it depends on the individual and many other things. What but the worst the health, case in it- Can I ask real quick, like what are some of the health, and I'm sure people are familiar with this, but what are some of the health effects that you see more common than others? So uh, the list is very, very long. So as I said, the worst case scenario is glioma, is a type of a brain cancer, but this is a worst case scenario. If you ask people, um, in, I'll give you an example, tobacco or use of alcohol, you know, what are their health effects? Well, the list is huge. The worst case scenario, if you smoke, you get the lung cancer. Right. But that's not everyone gets. It's very few get that. But beyond that, overall, your health is just off. You're just not, you know, able to function as a person that is non-smoker, for example. Right. Standing here, a person that, con and I'm not talking about sensitive people because that's another topic, and there are hundreds of millions of them. Hundreds of millions, okay? Hmm. EHS people, again, EHS, it's a disease in the European Union. Right. Okay. So, um, so, 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 so you just, your, your life quality uh, and your, your health is just, you know, not a part, uh, aligned with a, a person that doesn't have that exposure. And there, the list is very long. It's lack of concentration, lack of sleep, insomnia, heart palpitation, and many, many, many other things. We can go into it uh, in details. But I'm encourage people just look it up. Don't take my words for it. Again, I'm not here to 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 really uh, scare anyone. We never do that. We never tell people that they will be hurt if they're going to use technology. I'm actually using technology all day, every day. And I'm, I'm loving it and I think it's great. And at the end of the day, technology there is to make our life easier and in many ways, actually better. But, uh, you know, there is, a, th th there is a need to put something in this technology that will reduce the negative effects of electromagnetic radiation. I've been saying, giving this example to people before when in the 19th century, they came up with an automobile uh, and it started to, to spread around the planet. They, they realized that these cars back in the beginning of the 20th century, they're very dirty. The emission is horrible. Right. You can't breathe if you're near, back then, you can't breathe if you're near the car. They didn't ban cars. They said cars are great. They're phenomenal. They're going to change the world. What they did, they added catalytic converter and exhaust. Yeah. And bet. the problem was solved, right? And this is exactly the same thing here. Technology should stay. We shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't scare people, stop using yourself and use it. But be mindful and understand that there is an exposure of electromagnetic radiation that does accumulate. Now, it's not just your cell phone. There are hundreds of other things you do, right, that emit electromagnetic uh, field. And going forward, because if once the 5G will be fully adopted, the exposure levels to electromagnetic radiation will be increased 1,000%, 1,000%, okay? Wow. And then they're gonna be further increased. So now we need to say, okay, we now need to introduce a, a method or a technology that we can now use to, so we can safely use the, 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 the telecommunication technology. And that's where we're going with it. There will be time and it's coming already. It's uh, like, I know there, there, it's actually happening already. There is enough pressure on telecommunication uh, technology companies and they're basically gonna, gonna have to develop something yes. or acquire somebody that already has a technology and a method where right. they can implement it in their devices so they become more uh, organic so it say or, or or more cleaner when it comes to electromagnetic radiation well, there's your angle right this is the angle exactly but to get there we want to get there i mean always saying that i mean yeah i have my vision and the company vision and we do uh eventually and we will eventually will supply our technology oem but to get there is always through consumer adoption this is your best way that's your biggest core. That's how you can, you know, you can open any door and you don't even need to open any door. They approach you and you can, you know, put a higher price on it. Yeah. So you need to, to, to go out direct to consumer, uh, work hard every day, 
And then once the adoption and uh, of the consumers is there, you can you don't need to prove anything to anybody. You'll just you know be able to supply it to, through OEM. So revenues up four hundred percent this year. Last uh, year. Last year. Last year. Yeah. Only a uh, company within your space that's currently projected. So forward thinking roadmap question: What's coming down the pipe? What can investors look forward to in the coming couple of quarters? Well, I could say I, I would, but uh, you know there are a lot of things in the pipeline, a lot of exciting things. I think people, at the very least, need to just put us put us on the watch list and subscribe to our newsletter and take a look at our press releases because there are a lot of things uh, on the go, and uh, the future is very exciting and bright. That's excellent. Listen, appreciate your time. I know you're busy, but uh, all the best, and let's keep in touch. Thank you very much for having me and uh, have yourself a great day, sir. You too. Thanks, Dimitri.